Chapter 9 The Transfiguration Matthew 17-1-13 and Luke 9-28-36 Mark 9 verse 1, KJV And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Not taste of death, till they would eventually taste of death after they had seen the kingdom of God come with power, and that is what happened. Mark 9 verse 2, KJV, And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter, and James, and John, and letteth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And after six days, verse 3 happened and fulfilled verse 1. What about where it says in Luke 9 verse 28 that it was about eight days? How do you reconcile six and eight days? Is this an error in the Bible? No. Read verse 2 above again. It says after six days, not in six days, or on the sixth day. So that makes it seven days at least. It says about in eight days after. Not on the eighth day, or in eight days, but about in eight days after. Mark 9 verse 3, KJV, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so, as no fuller on earth can white them. Fuller, is a person who is a bleacher of clothing. Mark 9 verse 4, KJV, and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. There appeared unto them Elias with Moses. Luke 9 verse 31 also tells us that Elias, Elijah, and Moses spoke to Jesus about his decease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Luke 9 verse 31 KJV Who appeared in glory, and spake of his decease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Mark 9 verses 5 to 6 KJV And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. Let us make three tabernacles. Tabernacles were what the children of Israel erected in the wilderness as temporary dwelling places, habitations, while they followed Moses. They were called booths in Leviticus 23 verses 34 to 42 KJV, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be in holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, on the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, it is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your freewill offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days, on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute for ever in your generations, ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days, all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Peter did not know what to say because he and the others were afraid, but Moses and Elias wouldn't need a tabernacle slash booth erected, they were not staying around much longer. Mark 9 verses 7 to 8, KJV, And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. A cloud that overshadowed them, a cloud is often seen when God speaks to Israel. They got to see a brief glimpse of the kingdom power when Moses and Elijah talked with Jesus about his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Luke 9 verses 30 to 31 KJV
And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory, and spake of his decease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. This is my beloved son, Mark 12 verse 6, Mark 9 verse 9, KJV, and as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. Tell no man what things they had seen, imagine the confusion if Israel had heard that Elijah had appeared, and they missed him. They were rightfully expecting his return. That is why Jesus told them not to mention this until after his resurrection. Not long after Jesus' resurrection, Peter told those who had obtained like precious faith with the eleven what they had seen. 2 Peter 1 verses 16 to 19 KJV For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the Excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to ye do well, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. A light that shineth in a dark place is speaking about the gospel of the kingdom being preached to others in the dark place of the tribulation period. The day dawn is speaking about the day of rest in the kingdom. The day star arise in your hearts is Christ the day star. Day star is one word in Greek, phosphorus. Mark 9 verse 10, KJV, and they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. This is the first of two times that Jesus tells his disciples of his death and resurrection. They do not understand how it is possible for Messiah to die, because the rabbis have taught them out of the law that Christ abideth forever. John 12 verse 34 KJV The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever, and how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? The rising from the dead, Jesus was talking about just himself rising from among the dead. The rest of the dead stayed in the grave. Like with the story of Lazarus, all of Israel understood what the rising of the dead, when all the dead shall rise, was, but the rising from the dead was different. In the first instance all the dead are raised, some to torment, and some to eternal life. Mark 9 verses 11 to 12, KJV, and they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man, that he must suffer many things, and be set at naught. Isaiah 53 verse 3 He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Be said it not, Luke 23 verse 11 They despised him as nothing, or no one. To be esteemed as nothing. Mark 9 verse 13, KJV But I say unto you, that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. Where was John when this was said? In prison, because of the king's wife, Herodias, the wife of Herod. Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Did Elijah, Elias, ever come? Yes, of course. He came the first time and Israel persecuted him. The king's wife mainly, whose name was Jezebel. Luke 1 verse 17 And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John was not Elijah reincarnated, he came in the spirit and power of Elijah, and yet he did no miracle. He did, however, draw a large crowd because of his preaching. The words drew the people to him. As it is written of him, there is nothing written about Elias that said he would be imprisoned and beheaded as John the Baptist was. 
Matthew 11 verse 14, and if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for two. Come. 15, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Some keys to understanding verse 14 that you need to know who the ye is. The ye are the multitudes that he was asking them what they went out for to see in Matthew 11 verse 7. What is the it that the ye need to receive? The it is the kingdom as mentioned in verse 12 of Matthew 11. Matthew 11 verse 12 And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Jesus heals a boy Matthew 17 14 21 and Luke 9 37 42. Mark 9 verses 14 to 29, KJV, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pinneth away, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him, and, Seth, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire, and into the waters, to destroy him, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. All things are possible to him that believeth. We are not a future kingdom of priests that needs to be cleansed today. That was promised to Israel, not to the body of Christ. To see how things are different today, read the Apostle Paul's epistles to the body of Christ. Romans through Philemon by prayer and fasting, Jesus gave the twelve power to cast out devils, but the stronger the devil was, the stronger the spiritual weapons they would need to use to cast them out. Prayer and fasting were things Jesus often spent long times doing, he could easily cast the devil out of this man. Some of the twelve were known to fall asleep during prayer at times. Jesus foretells of his death Matthew 17, 22-23 and Luke 9, 43-45. Mark 9 verses 30-32, KJV, And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples, and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men. The chief priests and elders delivered Jesus unto Pilate. Matthew 27 verse 1 KJV When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. But they understood not that saying, it is not that the words that Jesus spake were not understandable, it was that they did not fit with their idea of what the Messiah would do. Luke adds, and it was hid from them. Luke 9 verse 45 KJV, but they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them, that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. 
Many rabbis through history had focused on the good things that the Messiah would do for Israel when he came, and that was popular, when they had just come out of Babylonian captivity, and when they were ruled by the Romans. They all knew about the resurrection of the dead for all believing Israel, but they did not understand what the rising from the dead meant. Who should be the greatest Matthew 18,1-5 and Luke 9,46-48? Mark 9 verses 33 to 37, KJV, And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house he asked them, What was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves, who should be the greatest. And he sat down, and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them, and when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. There is coming a future judgment of the sheep and the goats. Those who have blessed one of the least of these my brethren, the Jews, will be blessed at that judgment, but those that have cursed them will be cursed. Matthew 25 verses 40 to 41 And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say, Unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Notice what happens to those who did not bless Jesus' brethren, they were cast into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You and I will not be at this judgment. Forbid him not Luke 9 colon 49-50, Mark 9 verses 38 to 40, KJV, and John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name, that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Forbid him not, how could someone else do miracles that were not a part of the twelve? Weren't these gifts restricted solely to the twelve? No, not just them, the seventy could cast out devils and heal as well. The number 70 made up the number of ruling elders in Israel. The 70 were not sent as apostles, which means sent ones. They still had that same power once their one-time mission was over as evidenced here. They will be part of Israel's Sanhedrin in the kingdom one day. The Sanhedrin were Israel's judges in those days, and were 70 in number, but none of them could cast out a devil. Jesus had the real Sanhedrin in the 70 he sent out only once. Luke 10 verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Mark 9 verse 41, KJV, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Matthew 18 verses 6 to 9 and Luke. Mark 9 verse 42, KJV, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. A millstone, a large circular stone with a hole in its center that was placed inside a much larger mill, also made of stone to crush wheat and barley to make flour. It weighed more than the average woman or man depending on the size of the mill. During the tribulation period, the world will be operating under a different set of rules. The dispensation of grace will be over, and God's wrath will be on display. It will be a different administration, dispensation, at that time, and what happens today under the economy of grace will not be happening then. If someone blesses a child of Abraham, they will be blessed. But if they curse them, they will be cursed, just as it was when it was told to Abraham in Genesis 12. That promise is not in effect during this current dispensation because Israel is in unbelief today. After the rapture of the body of Christ happens, the 70th week of Daniel begins, and Israel will once again be the focus of God's attention. 
Mark 9 verses 43 to 48, KJV, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter into life maimed, than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter halt into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God, with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Three times in this passage Jesus mentions the reality of the torment in a literal hell where the fire is eternal. We are not to cut off our hands or feet today, nor are we to pluck out our eyes to keep us from seeing sinful things in the dispensation of grace. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, many Bible versions delete verses 44 and 46. Verse 48 says the same thing, but if God says it three times in five verses, it must be important to Him. We should not delete verses from the Bible. Mark 9 verses 49 to 50, KJV, For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. Chapter 10 The Pharisees tempt Jesus Matthew 19, 1-12 Mark 10 verses 1-4, KJV And he arose from thence, and cometh into the coasts of Judea by the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again, and, as he was wont, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him, and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement, and to put her away. To put away his wife, to divorce her. Tempting him, the religious were trying to catch Jesus speaking contrary to the law of Moses so they could have him tried as a blasphemer. This was impossible because Jesus was the law incarnate in human flesh. John 1 verse 1 KJV In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. A bill of divorcement, Deuteronomy 24 verse 1 KJV, When a man hath taken a wife, and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. Mark 10 verse 5, KJV, And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. Precept, Law. Mark 10 verses 6 to 9, KJV, But from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So, then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Put asunder, put away, or apart. To divorce. Mark 10 verses 10 to 12, KJV, And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife, and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband, and be married to another, she committeth adultery. Notice again that Jesus elaborated to his disciples more on the subject, because they did not have any ulterior motives behind them, and they just wanted to learn. More about God's word. Jesus too had an even more conservative stance than the law of Moses did because Jesus was telling them what God had intended from the beginning. God intended marriage would be forever, because of sin God allowed divorce in some circumstances. If you quote verse 11 or 12 as your only proof text, then you can get a wrong understanding of divorce and remarriage. In the verse preceding these two verses, some exceptions are mentioned for the innocent party getting remarried. Nowhere in the law was someone allowed to get a no-fault divorce. If a husband was faithful to his wife, loved her, provided for her, and didn't beat her, 
she couldn't just divorce her husband and go find a new one. That would be considered adultery under the law. Young children brought to Jesus Matthew 19,13-15 and Luke 18,15-17. Mark 10 verses 13 to 16, KJV, And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. For if such is the kingdom of God, childlike faith in Jesus as the Christ was what God required of Israel to receive the kingdom, to enter into it. Little children believe what they see and hear, while adults can be talked out of things if it does not fit in with what their community says. The rich young ruler Matthew 19, 16-26 and Luke 18, 18-30. Mark 10 verse 17, KJV, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running, and kneeled to him, and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? For us in the dispensation of grace we receive eternal life as a free gift from God, we don't do anything. We simply believe the gospel for us today. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Ephesians 2 verse 8 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, nine not of works, lest any man should boast. Mark 10 verses 18 to 19, KJV, And Jesus said unto him, Why chiest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal. Do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. Exodus 20 verses 12 to 17 KJV Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Though knowest the commandments, Jesus didn't tell this person that was born under the law that he could inherit eternal life by grace through faith. He does tell this man that he knows the commandments. Then he lists five do nots, and one do as his answer to the man's question about how to obtain eternal life. Matthew 19 verse 17 And he said unto him, Why chiest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Mark 10 verses 20 to 27, KJV, And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about, and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again, and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. The kingdom of God, the theme of entering into Israel's kingdom continues here and we see that a person who believes with childlike faith must also act upon that faith. Repeatedly Jesus tells his followers to sell all that they have and to come follow him. Remember this is not your mail. You do not have to sell all that you have to enter into Israel's kingdom today. 
You are not Israel. They were living in expectation that the kingdom that was at hand would soon arrive. It is on hold today while Israel is in unbelief and the dispensation of grace is in operation. The apostles' doctrine mentioned in early Acts also required the selling of all that you had and laying the proceeds at the apostles' feet for even distribution to those who had need. Acts 4 verses 35 to 37 KJV and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Hoseas, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. And the penalty for disobedience in Acts 5 verses 1 to 11 KJV, but a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead, and, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. We have left all Matthew 19,27-30, Mark 10 verses 28-31, KJV, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all, and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. We have left all and have followed thee, this was a requirement set by Jesus for Israel only when the kingdom is at hand. This will be the same during the tribulation period just before Jesus sets up his kingdom. Verse 21 above. The world to come, this is the long-awaited kingdom promised to Israel. We today in the church have a heavenly destiny. Jesus foretells of his death again Matthew 27,17-19 and Luke 18,31-34. Mark 10 verses 32-34, KJV, And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed, and as they followed, they were afraid. And he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles, and they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. The Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, and unto the scribes, Judas delivered Jesus unto them. They shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. The chief priests and scribes delivered Jesus to Rome, Pilate, and Herod. Mark's gospel does not include Peter's rebuke of Jesus here and Jesus' subsequent rebuke of Peter, but instead he writes about Jesus' rejection by Israel's leaders and his crucifixion and resurrection. 
Jesus immediately begins to speak of himself in the third person and calls himself the Son of Man, and he tells them that Israel shall reject and kill the Son of Man. Daniel 7 verse 3 identifies the Son of Man as the Christ who will come with the clouds of heaven to receive the kingdom from the Ancient of Days. And they shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 22, and John 19. And the third day he shall rise again, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and John 20. James and John Matthew 20 colon 20-28. Mark 10 verses 35 to 39, KJV, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one on thy right hand, and the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. The cup that I drink of, the cup of Christ's suffering. Matthew 26 verse 39 KJV And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. The baptism that I am baptized with, this was not a reference to his previous water baptism, because James and John were both baptized by John the Baptist as was Jesus. Romans 6 verse 3 is another time the word baptism is used, relating to death, but it is with the body of Christ not as it is here with Israel. Romans 6 verse 3 KJV Know ye not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? He was referring to the baptism of persecution unto death. We read about James' death, his baptism, at the hands of King Herod in Acts 12 verse 1 KJV, now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Mark 10 verses 40 to 45, KJV, But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to him, and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you, shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest, shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Blind Bartimaeus Matthew 20 colon 29-34 and Luke 18 colon 35-43 Mark 10 verses 46 to 52, KJV, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they call the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Thou son of David, this is the first time that title is used in Mark, it will be used by Christ in chapter 12 to teach that Christ is the son of David. Mark 12 verses 33 to 35. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Bartimaeus had the faith that Jesus was the Christ, the son of David, and he alone could give him back his sight. 
If the kingdom would have been established shortly after this, then Bartimaeus would have become a priest in that kingdom. He would still be serving unto this day, but Israel's religious rejected Jesus as the son of David, the heir to the throne, and as their Christ. It does not matter how much faith you have today that God is going to heal you. We are not under Israel's kingdom program, which had as a part of it, healing for Jews to become clean to serve in their future kingdom as priests. We are not Israel. We are the body of Christ. God can heal today, but not because you name and claim Israel's promises. God is not doing for the body of Christ what he promised exclusively to the nation of Israel. Chapter 11 Hosanna in the highest Matthew 21,1-11, Luke 19,28-40 and John 12,12-19, 12, 12 Mark 11 verses 1-3, KJV, And when they came nigh to Jerusalem, unto Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat, loose him, and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. Whereon never man sat, Jesus could tame his creation. This is a sign of the kingdom when the lion will lay down with the lamb. Mark 11 verses 4 to 10, KJV, And they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye, loosing the colt? And they said unto them even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, blessed be the kingdom of our father David, that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Zechariah 9 verse 9 Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, he is just, and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Israel was about to crucify the king of that prophesied kingdom and this was happening during the 69th week of Daniel. Israel only had to endure to the end of the 70th week of Daniel, so they could enter into their millennial kingdom, but they didn't. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 26 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore, and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall even, in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. The Messiah's death for others was a part of Israel's prophecy program, and they should have been looking for it. They should have recognized him coming into Jerusalem that day fulfilling Daniel's prophecy, but they didn't. Mark 11 verse 11, KJV, and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. Jesus curses the fig tree Matthew 21 colon 18 dash 19. Mark 11 verses 12 to 14, KJV, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter for ever. And his disciples heard it. A fig tree, the fig tree is a type of Israel in the Bible. 
Israel was supposed to produce fruits of judgment and righteousness, but they were not. For three years Jesus had come seeking fruit from Israel, but he found none. Luke 13 verses 1 to 9 KJV There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen, upon whom the tower in Siloam fell, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelled in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none, cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Jeremiah 24 verses 1 to 10 KJV, The Lord shewed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord, after that Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon had carried away captive Jeconiah the son of Jehoiakim king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths, from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, What sayest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them, and not pull them down, and I will plant them, and not pluck them up. And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, surely thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem, that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt, and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. Israel will be going through the tribulation period in which God will save a remnant of them who believe in Christ, and who flee into the wilderness. Adam and Eve made aprons by sewing fig leaves together to cover their nakedness. Genesis 3 verse 7 KJV And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. The time of figs is not yet, some say the figs come first, but that is not what this verse says, besides Israelites are not really fig trees, but they are supposed to produce fruit. It was an object lesson concerning Israel being fruitless. Luke 13 verses 6 to 9 KJV He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none, cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. The 144,000 are called the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb in Revelation 14 verse 4. No fruit is being produced today by Israel and its leaders as most of them are in unbelief. Revelation 14 verse 4 KJV These are they which were not defiled with women, 
for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. Jesus went into the temple Matthew 21 colon 12 17, Mark 11 verses 15 to 16, KJV, and they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Exodus 12 verse 16. No manner of work shall be done. Mark 11 verse 17, KJV, And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. Isaiah 56 verse 7 KJV, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Mark 11 verse 18, KJV, And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. In Exodus and Leviticus Moses writes to Israel about the procedure for them to have the remission of their sins. It involved a tabernacle made of animal skins that enclosed the dwelling place of God. A type of God taking on human flesh and becoming our Savior. Before the Lamb of God, Jesus, could enter the temple, the temple had to be cleansed. The high priest had to make himself ready by washing himself, Jesus washed himself at his baptism. He then had to be anointed for his priestly calling. The Holy Spirit descended upon him at his baptism anointed him to be Israel's high priest. The fig tree dried up Matthew 21 colon 20-22. Mark 11 verses 19 to 21, KJV, And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Instead of people coming to the Jews for salvation, Israel would be dispersed, and salvation would no longer be of the Jews. Mark 11 verses 22 to 24, KJV, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. He shall have whatsoever he saith. You are not the little flock, the Israel of God, who received the kingdom promises that were foretold in the prophets to be given to Israel. It would be given to the Israel of God. Galatians 6 verse 16 KJV And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. That is not you, nor anyone that has been alive for the last 1900 plus years. The Jewish believers whose fathers were promised all these things got a little taste of these kingdom powers while they lived in those years after Jesus' three-year ministry. Unbelieving Israel did not receive these promises because they rejected their Messiah. You cannot tell a mountain to be removed and to be cast into the sea today, because this was not spoken to you, or to anyone in this dispensation of grace. 2 Kings 19 verses 30 to 31 And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. A remnant, the little flock of Luke 12 verse 32 were the Israel of God, also called the elect in the Bible. They were to be recipients of the kingdom because the requirement to enter the kingdom was faith in the Christ, the King. Forgiveness Matthew 18 35 Mark 11 verses 25 to 26, KJV, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. 
But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. If you are saved today, you are already forgiven. Under the law you had to forgive to be forgiven. We forgive today because Christ has already forgiven us. Jesus Authority challenged Matthew 21,23-27 and Luke 20,1-8. Mark 11 verses 27-29, KJV, And they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests, and the scribes, and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. By what authority doest thou these things? That these things that they were mentioning were his casting out the money changers, his healing, and his teaching in the temple area. Mark 11 verses 30 to 33, KJV, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say, From heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say, Of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John, that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, it was from heaven. It was the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mark 1 verse 4 In the kingdom the Jewish people will be sprinkled with clean water so that they might become a kingdom of priests in their promised kingdom. Ezekiel 36 verse 25 Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness, and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel.